You know, when you were the best player on your Pop Warner team, and then you became the best player on your AAU team, then you get to junior high and you middle school, and you're the best player in middle school. You get to high school, and they tell you you're the you're the best player in your high school team. You're the best player in the state. You're the best player in your area. Wait a minute. You're the number one high school player in the country. When people start telling you you're a next generational talent, then you get to Ohio State. It's two Bosa boys right there in your locker room. And they're still telling you that two generational talents right there in your locker room. And they're telling you you're even better than those two. Then you get to the National Football League. Have a great rookie year. Bought energy to a franchise that was starving for a bolt of something, anything. And you came there and you didn't disappoint. Make it to the playoffs. Then the next year, it isn't as good as all those years previous. And then on top of it, you get hurt. I remember watching Allen Iverson. I know these are two different sports, but Allen Iverson, he played for my Philadelphia 76ers. I just, I loved AI. And it was a speech that AI gave. I don't know if it was where it was, but he said something that stuck out to me. He was like, after the draft, he saw Kobe and he said, what's up, Kobe? Kobe said, what's up, AI? Kobe said, hey, AI, what you about to do? AI said, I'm about to go to the club. And then AI said, Kobe, what you about to do? I'm about to go to the gym. When you're a generational talent like Iverson and, and Kobe, when you're a generational talent like Mike or LeBron, and when you're a generational talent like Von Miller and Chase Young, you have to be in the gym because somebody's coming for you at all times because they know that you're a generational talent. You have to work on parts of your game that's not the best part of your game to make sure that you're playing at even a higher level because somebody's coming for you every day. Fans can't wait to call you a bus, B. I know you're not a bus. In my heart of hearts, I think that that you're going to come back from this injury and you're going to help this football team and you're going to get back to the Chase Young of old. And then after that, then you'll be the dominant player that you should be. But the work has to be put in. The work has to be put in in mo different moves. The work has to be put in with hands. This got to be, in order for you to live up to being a generational player, you have to put in work three times three times harder than everybody else michael jordan yeah he was very gifted but he worked harder than anybody else because he hated losing kobe bryant same thing generational talents now there's an exception to the rules <laughs> like the great lawrence taylor lawrence taylor get drunk get high all night and still do what he does. He's just a, a, a absolute freak of nature. But everybody's not LT. Tom Brady. Look how much money he spends on his body in the offseason. LeBron James. These, these guys both spend a million dollars on their body. You paid them this money and then they take their money and put it into their body. And that's what I think Chase is going to do. Chase, Tom loves you. Talk to Tom. Start talking with goats. Talk to former goats. Because you're supposed to be talking goat talk. You're not just supposed to be a regular guy getting 1.5 sacks in nine games. You're supposed to be talking goat talk. And the only way you're going to talk goat talk is to put in the goat work. And I believe he's going to put in the goat work. Let's take commission.